Hello and welcome back. Thank you as always for joining me here today. We're going to take a look at freedom today. What is it? The title of our discussion is the definition of freedom, and we're going to look at that within the context of A Course in Miracles. So as you follow along here specifically, we're on chapter eight, section four of the text, paragraphs seven and eight. The section is entitled The Gift of Freedom, and we're going to talk about what that is today. So here in the world, when you really think about it, which you're invited to do, especially right now, we're not really sure what freedom actually is, are we? We attribute it to many things here in our daily lives. We attribute it, depending on where you live, to our systems of government, to our constitutions and charters. We attribute it to all kinds of things, sometimes to our armed forces. We attribute freedom to our laws, legislation, all kinds of things. But a definition that everybody's going to agree on is elusive in this world isn't it? Because here in this world, nobody's going to agree on one certain thing. That's not the way the world as a separation device, which it is a separation device, a separation idea. That's not the way it's set up. So let's take whatever we may have learned or thought about the idea of freedom and just set it aside for the next 15 minutes or so today. Let's talk about the gift of freedom within the context of A Course in Miracles. So here at the tail end of this section, Jesus repeats a point that we talk about all the time on these videos because it comes up again and again in A Course in Miracles. It's also in the Bible. Of myself, I can do nothing. Yes, exactly. Of yourself, you can do nothing because of yourself, you are nothing. Mm. Of yourself, all alone, isolated, you are nothing. There is no isolation. There is no separation doesn't necessarily feel like that in the world. And perhaps you're thinking, what exactly are you talking about? What I mean is that there's no separation of any kind. We cannot be cut off, isolated, alone, and of ourselves, an individual island, a self-sustaining survival unit. That is a simple error. It's a mistake that we can choose to set aside. You might rightly ask, what happens then? Well, we're making way for truth. We're allowing truth to be just as it is. And you have never left your source, capital S. Each and every one of us, and there appear to be 8 billion of these things running around that we call human beings, more or less. Each and every one of us is at home where we've always been. There's only oneness. Ideas leave not their source and we are the thought of God, having never left our source, which should put for all time an end to the question, where are we?
At home in God, of course. Where else? So another really, really important message here in starting paragraph seven out with saying of yourself, you can do nothing because of yourself, you are nothing. What we try to do in the world is we try to run the show all by ourselves, don't we? We think that it's all up to us to orchestrate and manipulate all compound phenomena, all of it, every single last little thing, all of them, all of them all phenomena we try to orchestrate and order and control and manipulate, which defines our lives, our busy lives, our calendars, our email, our schedule, our work schedule, our sleep schedule, excess activity, a lot. Feel overwhelmed? It's easy to do in the world, isn't it? What we call human life here in the world is characterized by excess activity and frustration. Because when we attempt to run off and orchestrate and manipulate all phenomena all by ourselves, we want the weather to do what we want it to do. We want other people to do what we want them to do, which they may do for a moment. And then they do the exact opposite, don't they? We try to uh, manipulate and control everything. And how's that working out for you? Are you completely 100% happy all of the time? Does your joy in manipulating a situation or someone last? And when you honestly answer no, it does not, then it's an invitation for us to come back to what this course is teaching us that of ourselves, we can do nothing because of ourselves, we are nothing. We are not alone and isolated. Now here in the world, we can feel that way. Most definitely, most definitely. It's not true. Now, when you feel overwhelmed and alone and isolated, it's true for you in that moment because you've made it so. So this is a discussion about the power of our mind. Having made a situation that's a hot mess, we can unmake it because we made it. Mm. We can unmake it. We can choose right now in the present moment to set it all aside oh. and take a deep relaxing breath just like that because that actually is what this feels like. If you've ever done it, you'll know when you set some of this self-concept, this ego clinging Aside, there is a profound sense of relief. What rushes in is not death and damnation like you may have feared, but relief, peace, which is our natural state. What we call the spiritual path and our spiritual practice is a way of setting aside all of our ego clinging, so that we may truly experience who and what we are. Freedom is an acknowledgement of what we are. It's an acknowledgement of what you are. It's an acknowledgement of what I am. It's an acknowledgement of what your ex is. It's an acknowledgement of what Jesus is. It's an acknowledgement of who and what God is, because there's only perfect oneness. So how do we experience this? We give freedom. We give love. We extend the miracle of true forgiveness to every living thing. And the world itself to the physical body, both of those, the world and the physical body, are complete illusions. 
we forgive everything that comes across our mind that is not perfectly and wholly joyous. And we will have some joyous moments. Those are symbolic of our oneness. They're symbolic of our radiance and magnificence as Christ, the Christ, the Son of God. Many of us have been raised in a tradition. I know a number of you were raised in a Judeo-Christian tradition, as I was, uh, times two, actually. <laughs> First one church, then another which you may have heard, it's a story for another time. It's long, and my experience with fundamentalism, particularly Christian fundamentalism, is vast indeed. <laughs> what is it but an opportunity for forgiveness? So perhaps this informs your experience, and maybe you were raised to equate Christ with Jesus, the historical Jesus, and only Jesus, which is the way that this is portrayed. In fact, that's not so. The Christ is the thought of God, the Son of God, God's creation, the extension of God. Love extends only itself. God extends only himself doing this verbal math, good, we're meant to. We are the Christ. And Jesus says at several points here in A Course in Miracles that he is our equal. We call him an older brother if we want to. But we're one. There's only perfect oneness, so of course, of course he's our equal. Which lifts us all up when you allow yourself to think about it. So we're invited to do just that. Our freedom is in God. Where else would you be? Our freedom is in God. By offering freedom, you will be free. This is another way of saying that you learn what you teach, and you're always teaching. This is a very important idea from A Course in Miracles that we're always teaching. You do not have to hold yourself out, incidentally, as a teacher or an instructor of any kind, as I do. This is my own particular directive to turn on camera, microphone, and broadcast to share the Holy Spirit with all the world. And you're watching, so for that I thank you. We're always teaching, no matter what you do for a living, no matter what your station in life appears to be, we're always teaching because there is only perfect oneness. Therefore, we're always interacting with our brother. Our brother is us. Your brother is you. So, of course, we're always interacting. We're always both teaching and learning at the same time. As you teach, so you learn. As you share the miracle with your brother, so you learn. As you share freedom with your brother, so you experience freedom. And this plays out in the world, doesn't it? When you smile and say hello to somebody, you're highly unlikely to get an F-bomb list tirade in return. And if, well, and if you do, well, they're clearly having a bad day. 
what is that but an opportunity for forgiveness right what's more likely when you walk down the street and smile at somebody and say good morning they're quite likely to do the same back at worst they may say nothing at all when you walk down the street with a scowl on your face and say something nasty to your neighbor at best they're going to want to get away from you and at worst they may come after you there's a huge difference but the core principle here is all the same the difference is external the core of it is exactly the same you learn what you teach what you put out comes back doesn't it we're always teaching and learning we're always interacting with our brother because our brother is us so the question then becomes what do you want do you want the same old, same old, more separation, excess activity and frustration, and imprisonment of the mind? Or do you want freedom? Do you want the peace of God? Do you want to free your mind? That's the moment-to-moment -moment question for each and every one of us. We're invited to choose one answer and not the other however we're free to choose either one so if you decide that this is too much to take on at the moment and you wish to see yourself as a self-sustaining survival unit an ego so be it what happens is our inner teacher the Holy Spirit simply waits for us to change our mind. We can run and hide the rest of this lifetime if you want to. It's your choice. This is a very, very, very powerful choice. Or we could choose the thought system of the Holy Spirit. We could choose the strength of Christ. How about saying that to yourself periodically throughout the day when you remember to do so? I choose the strength of Christ. Hmm. Yes. I like the sound of that. How about you? There is only perfect oneness. And the Father and the Son are one. In the conclusion of this section of the text, Jesus talks about the Holy Trinity. Of course, if, if you're familiar with the Holy Trinity from Christianity, we've got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? one. The Son is Christ, the Christ, the thought of God, God's extension of himself. Who are you? Truly. Love extends itself. God extends himself and only himself. One. There is only perfect oneness. And here in the world where that certainly doesn't appear to be the case, it's so, so worth taking time out of your busy day or your evening, wherever you are, whatever time it is when you watch this recording, to just let these ideas sink in. The more you allow these ideas to penetrate your mind, the better. Because we begin then to contemplate them. And if you're skeptical, no problem. You're welcome to question everything that appears to come out of this mouth. This is true of any spiritual teacher in any tradition worldwide. 
we're free to question and question away. You are welcome to question the truth and veracity of A Course in Miracles. You're welcome to spend the rest of your life, if you want to, attempting to disprove the truth of perfect oneness. I mean, if that's what you choose to do, nobody's going to stop you. But there are naturally much better uses of your time. So the more that we allow ourselves to listen to the voice of our inner teacher, which is always speaking to us, always, the more we allow ourselves to listen, the better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And if you've been doing this for a while, think about how different you are. If you've been doing this for several years, where were you emotionally when you began? What was your life like when you started your practice? Whatever that is, it doesn't have to be this course, but whatever it is. And how about now? After however much time of diligent, consistent, persistent effort, which is completely up to you. Are you a different person? Are you more loving? Are you more forgiving? Is the veil growing thin? When it begins to grow thin, it's a beautiful thing. And this is something that we will all experience. When in time do we begin to experience this? Well, that's largely up to us, isn't it? Because only we can make the decision right now in the present moment to choose love instead of fear. We're choosing our self with a capital S. We're choosing the strength of Christ. We're choosing truth. It is so, so powerful to do exactly what you're doing right now and let these words, which are the words of the Holy Spirit, speak to you. When something lands, it's your inner teacher. It's our inner teacher that's talking. It's not Reverend Tomas Garza. What you see right here is an assortment of pixels and, and digital particles. It's an image on your screen. When something lands, it's not an image on your screen. It's the Holy Spirit that's speaking to you. So we would all do well to listen. Again, the call goes out to all of us all the time. Will we listen? And I hope that the answer may be a resounding yes. Okay. So, <laughs> thank you as always for joining me here it's a pleasure to have you, and what I appreciate more than anything else, more than subscriptions, more than likes, more than comments and thumbs up and views and all of that, which, by the way, I do appreciate, what I appreciate the most is your dedication and commitment to your spiritual practice. I'm fond of saying this, but it's true, and I mean it. This is the highest form of offering that you could ever give anyone anywhere at any time, period, and it's not even close. It is a higher form of offering than service in kind, whatever way that may look. It's higher than a gift of money or or anything else. Your dedication and commitment to practice, that is, I mean, when you think of what does your brother need, that's what your brother needs. It's what you need. It's what we all need. So thank you for that. The subscription button, by the way, if you haven't joined us, is right here in the corner of our screen. That's the red arrow. Go ahead and click that. We'd love to have you join us. What we've got here is a rapidly growing international community of people that are interested in A Course in Miracles. So it truly is a, a wonderful thing to be able to share with you here. And go ahead and join us if you haven't already. Comments and questions, as always, are most welcome. So please feel welcome to leave them. 
And uh, there have been a couple of questions that I'll just go ahead and answer here at the tail end of this video today. They have to do with the advertisements that play on YouTube. And can I do anything about it? No, <laughs> I, I cannot. Um, the ads pop up in the playing of a video if we have the free version of YouTube, uh, which I have, by the way. I, I don't have the paid version either. And when I'm watching someone else's video, an ad may may crop up every so often during the, well, during the playing of the video, which I, I totally get can be disruptive. So in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, what I always see is a tiny little bar with a countdown, counts back from five seconds, and then a message skip ads shows up and I click that and, and they go away so you don't have to watch all of them however there's nothing that I can do personally about the playing of the ads that is completely up to YouTube and well that's how they make money another way is you can pay for a premium subscription and watch videos ad free. So whether you do that or not is completely up to you. Uh, there's there's nothing that I'm able to do about that. And um, if there's a hack, I don't know about it. So th there may be something else. Um, I'm not the technical wizard on that one. So I, I would advise you to consult another tech wizard, but um, at any rate, we could consider if we're going through and an ad interrupts a, a deeply meditative passage, we could consider it a forgiveness opportunity. Hmm. Often in social media, we experience this on many platforms, the ads are played at an increased volume. <laughs> so someone's rightly attempting to get our attention in the first few seconds of the ad. Yeah. No forgiveness opportunity, maybe. Um, if, if anyone is aware of a way around that short of buying the paid subscription, I have no idea about that. So anyway, I wanted to just address that one here at the end and I thank you all for watching and for tuning in. And I will see you again very soon.